In a modern vehicle, if you disconnect your battery for any reason, say to change your battery to a new one, or in this case, to clean up a terminal that's got corrosion, you will risk losing the memory in your computer. And here's the vehicle's computer right here. So we want to supply 12 volts to the car while the battery is disconnected. One way to do this is through your OBD2 port, and in this vehicle is behind this cover. There is available on the market a number of adapters which will plug right onto this OBD2 port, and on the other end there will be a set of alligator clips that you can connect to the positive and negative terminals of a battery. Or you could even use a jumper box. So this is a very convenient way to supply power right through the OBD2 port. This way you will save all of your presets, including your radio presets, your phone connectivity presets, as well as the computer's memory data that allows your car to drive better, things such as your long-term fuel trim. Now I don't have one of those adapters with the alligator clips, but what I do have is a breakout box. A breakout box is something we use for automotive diagnostics. And of course we have the OBD2 connector that we need. Once we plug that in we can see that our breakout box is lit up. We can see it's a 16 pin box so it takes all the 16 pins of our OBD2 connector and puts them into a box for easy connectivity for each of the pins. We see battery positive lit up here on pin 16. And we can see that our chassis ground here is on pin 4. And the way it's lit up, you can't go wrong. In a previous video, you'll recall that we used a laptop 12 volt power supply to power our electric seats in the shop. So the question is, can we use this same power supply to power up our breakout box as a memory saver? Is it adequate to supply the power the car needs? Well, let's take a look at the supply itself. We can see here that it is rated for 12 volts, of course, but also for two amps. So what does that mean? Well, because it's rated at two amps, oops, sorry about that. I don't know where we left off, but because this is rated at two amps, it can supply whatever is demanded up to two amps. Now we could estimate that when all the modules in the vehicle have gone to sleep after a bit of time and the door is shut, the vehicle will still require about 20 milliamps. So the two amps of our power supply is more than enough to do the trick. Normally you wouldn't have to open the door while you're changing out a battery, but if you did, the two amps might still power the interior lights. So let's go about uh, hooking up to our breakout box. First, you would want to be able to determine for your power supply which was positive and which was negative. Let's do that first. One way we can do that is with a typical meter. We'll set that to volts. And I hope the camera picks that up where you can read it. So let's take our positive test lead and put that into our breakout box at battery positive. 
The other lead will put to chassis ground. Do we not have a good connection here? Whoops. It helps to put the volts on DC, folks. So that reading is more like it. We have a little bit over 12 volts of battery power here. And notice the reading is positive 12. Now, if we were to switch these leads around and put our negative into the battery positive and our positive test lead into ground, chassis ground, then look we get a negative value, showing a difference in polarity. Still the 12 volts, but the polarity is wrong. Seeing how that works, we can also test our power supply the same way. We'll plug that into our 110 extension cord. Well, we need to get that adapter that we used for the seats because we had a pin that fit right into this end, right into the tip. We might assume that this center lead would be positive, but we have to verify. So I'll put the alligator clip onto our positive test lead. And the other lead we can just touch to the sleeve of our power supply. And there you go. We've got a positive reading of over 12 volts, about exactly the same as our battery level was. So it looks like we're on the right track. Now we're positive about our positive. And we're sure about our negative as well. And if you wanted to, it wouldn't be necessary, but as proof of concept, you could reverse the leads as we did previously in our breakout box. And you should get your negative figure. And we do. All we need now is the proper adapter to go from the tip to the positive in our breakout box. And uh, also another lead to connect our sleeve to the chassis ground. So we are through with the meter. And let's get some other cables to connect. We can reconnect our test lead as before into the center or the tip of our power supply. We'll use a red cable that has a banana plug on one end and that will plug into our breakout box. The other end has an alligator clip so we'll just put those together. Now we've got the full connectivity plus the fuses in line, don't forget. For the chassis ground, I have a green wire for that, just for continuity's sake here. And we can use the alligator clip directly on the sleeve of the power supply. So how neat is this? We're using our computer power supply to power up our vehicle's computer. Pretty cool. Now our battery is disconnected. Let's put this cloth here to keep it disconnected. We'll go around and open the door. That'll draw some more current. And our breakout box is still alive. Success. We're all cleaned up and done.